This episode is brought to you by Alan and Walter, this week's newest patrons. Thank you. I know that going cruising in the Caribbean on a catamaran is like dare to dream, right? The big cats we see out there, like the leopards and the lagoons and things like that, might be ridiculously roomy and fast and safe and maybe the ultimate live aboard sailboat, but even a used one can cost like half a million dollars. But what if you could get one a little bit cheaper? And it's still a buttload of money, I understand that, but this week on Everything You Need to Know, the $300,000 Catamaran. There are some obvious reasons you might consider a cat to be the right cruising sailboat for you. The first one is pretty obvious, the massive amount of space that you get in these things. Out back, you typically have this huge outdoor sort of patio slash living area that adds such a wonderful place to sort of just hang out. You can have friends over, you can do dinner parties. It's crazy. And off the back, you also get something most monohulls can only dream of. You get not one, but two sugar scoops. So maybe on one of the sugar scoops, you can have the kids out there snorkeling off that side of the boat and peeing in the water. Well, you get nice clean water over on the other side. Headed inside a catamaran, of course, you get another massive amount of space. This is usually a kitchen and living room sort of layout that people love. But a big note, it's also way up above the water, so it feels more like a condo than a sailboat. You aren't in some dark cave like you get with a monohull, and you get this huge panoramic view out of all these port lights, so it's absolutely a beautiful place to be. It feels a lot bigger than it is. The next big plus is each hull will typically have separate bedroom areas on either side so that you get this privacy and space for each person to have or each couple or have the adults on one side and the kids on the other. And at the back of each hull, you get the redundancy of having two engines, usually a pair of diesels with sail drives. There are the obvious reasons to consider a cat, but here are a couple things you might not have thought of. Due to the design of the boat, you usually get a very shallow draft, and you often see cats pulled right up to the beach instead of anchoring out in way deeper water. I remember one such boat I met who didn't even own a dinghy. They just pulled right up to the shore and jumped out. Also with a cat, you get speed, and a lot of it. On the best days, when I was cruising on Lady K, I could hold about 7 knots, but the cats I was hanging out with were often hitting 14 knots. That's literally double the speed that I was capable of. And with a cat, you also get the unique stability. And the people that get seasick really, really like this about cats. You don't have all the healing and rocking but it is replaced with sometimes a bit of banging and slapping. If you've ever been on a cat, you know what I'm talking about. And lastly, I love the idea of, and maybe you didn't think of this, being able to completely beach the boat if I need to. Imagine, for example, you have a through-hull failure, which I might know a thing or two about. You could conceivably, in your catamaran, plug that hole temporarily and then beach the whole boat at sort of almost high tide. And when the tide goes out, you effectively get a dry dock to make repairs in. You could do anodes, you could do bottom paint. Um, this could actually completely save you if you find yourself in that particular position. Okay, so on to the cats that you could conceivably buy right now for let's say less than 300 grand. And with the price in mind, we won't be getting sort of the newest, latest and greatest boat, but we can still get the expensive boat perks without too many drawbacks. When it comes to the cheaper cats, the first name that always comes up in the cheaper cat category is Prout. And here's a Prout 46, one of the big ones. And it's coming in just below the $300,000 market. For that, you get a lot of catamaran, but with one notable compromise, and that's my opinion. So here we go. On the outside, she's a very good looking cat. Tons of port lights. She's got a cutter rig, so big sail plan. You get dinghy davits. They've already got solar panels on it. And you get a full enclosure at the back. The ad also notes that all the standing rigging was just replaced. So this boat is ready to go. They note that they're the second owners of this boat and it is turnkey. They just returned from their second trip to the Bahamas. 
And of course, you get that big outside living area with a dedicated helm station and a proper chair and then seating all around. Inside, though, is where we find that compromise I was talking about as compared to the newer cats. We get this massive wraparound dining area that gives you ample space for, you know, half the anchorage to come over for sundowners and you get a TV, but you'll notice there's no kitchen here. This is because this owner's model has the galley down in one of the hulls, which I suppose is good at sea when things are really rough out, but I'm not sure how I feel about it compared to the newer cats that have the galley up on the main floor as sort of part of the living area. This makes the galley down in the hall not a social environment. So if you have some friends over and you're whipping up some dinner for them, you won't be part of the conversation. And that kind of sucks. But getting past that, both halls have massive staterooms for the owners and another couple to live aboard with privacy and peace and quiet because you're quite far apart in these two different halls. One nice touch upstairs though is that we get this nice dedicated nav station and it's forward facing so you could literally drive the boat from here with the autopilot if the weather isn't very good outside or if you have the AC blasting and you just don't want to open the door. For the price, this is an exceptional boat, an exceptionally good value. Everything's already done. You even get a water maker and twin Volvos and they're ready to go on their next adventure. You could buy this thing right now and still make it to the Bahamas this year with a few months left for cruising. Next up on our list is a brand I'm sure that you've heard of. This is a Leopard, a Leopard 42 from 2004. That's the one with the Mustang Fastback louvered windows. I might get some flack for saying that. This is a few feet less boat than that Prout was, but it gives you something that the Prout didn't. It gives you a main floor galley, which by now you've figured that I like. This boat was just hauled out and had her bottom completely redone. The bottom paint, the bootstripe, it was all stripped off, redone, all fresh and ready to go back in the water. The current owners just got back from five months in the Bahamas, so we know the boat can do it. These leopards also have the fiberglass arch over the back, and that gets rid of a lot of the lines, main sheets, things like that. And this one has davits already installed. They also have a full enclosure here, so you'll be comfortable regardless of the weather or regardless of where you are. If you're in Florida with those pesky no seams, they're not going to bother you in here. Everything on the top sides of this boat is organized and ready to go cruising. And ready to go again because it just got back. And it can easily be handled by a couple or a small family with all the lines led off to the cockpit. All the clutches are labeled nicely. Out back, we get that large living area too for entertaining and a dedicated helm station. I like that. The inside of this boat is as clean as the outside is with the dining table slash hangout area big enough for friends to come over for dinner and sit beside that, yes, main floor galley that lends itself a lot better to entertaining. You're part of the social atmosphere while you're cooking. This boat is also very tidy and well equipped with nav and control station, all the electronics you should need for your trip, including an EPIRB and all the radios, and it all looks very well cared for, or at least it's very well staged in the for sale pictures, which we don't actually see very often. It's kind of a good sign. And down in the hulls, this is the non-charter owner's version. So we get one hull with two staterooms and two heads, and the other hull with the master stateroom and a very large head. We also get a little office area down here with tons of storage. This boat comes with a water maker, a big Victron inverter charger, and a pair of Yanmars with about 4,400 hours on them, so there's some life left there. One of them even is upgraded to a 100 amp alternator. She's got new running rigging, a new air conditioning unit, and a six kilowatt generator if you're the power hungry type of cruiser. And when space and storage and speed are top of your list, it's really hard to argue with this Leopard 42 because it gives you everything that you can ask for without really breaking the bank. They're asking just shy of 300. One note to consider if you are looking for a cat that cost of ownership is a little bit different than the typical mono hull. You of course have two engines to maintain, two sets of oil changes, two sets of filters, all the fuel, all that kind of stuff, everything's a little bit more complicated and you have a bigger, more complicated rig to worry about if you're going to replace standing rigging or pull the mast down or try to put it back up. And when you do haul it out to redo the bottom paint every few years or do all the anodes, you will have to make sure that the travel lift at your chosen marina can actually fit a catamaran. They're obviously quite wide. There's a bit more to think about with these boats, but the owners will usually say, 
that the added cost and the added requirements because of the size are well worth the extra space, the speed, and of course the comfort. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make these videos possible. I definitely couldn't do it without you guys. Big shout out to all the patrons that have gotten us this far. If you'd like to help the channel or you get some value from these videos, please consider becoming a patron. This next boat is one you may not have heard of, and it's actually a very interesting version of this model. This is a 1999 Manta 40, but it's been extended at the back to make it a 42 footer. I've actually seen this boat before in real life, and it looks absolutely slick as it sails through the water. It's quite fast with the added water line. And while this Manta doesn't have a full enclosure at the ready like the other cats had, it does have a full-sized hard bimini, giving you tons of room to mount stuff on top of it. And these owners have taken advantage. They've got everything for cruising. They've got radar and solar and wind power, like everything that you can imagine to make this a safe and capable cruising cat. The helm station is particularly impressive on this boat too, with a very large wheel that you'd be more likely to see on a mono hull. And all the controls and the plotter are with arm's reach, as well as the controls for the electric winches. I suspect that you could sail this boat very easily alone, without very much trouble. Inside you get a proper, again, owner's version, a non-charter boat. The charters are the ones that have four bedrooms in the bottom. Um, this, this has one hull dedicated to the owner's queen-size stateroom with a private head. Then the other hull has two more staterooms, one being a queen and the other one's a double, and they get their own head to share. Also on this boat on the main floor, we get that large seating area with the galley next to it to make socializing easier. And we get a nav area with access to all the electronics. We even get laundry on this boat to make life a little easier at sea if you're sort of posh like that. We get a pair of Volvo 2030s, which is what my boat has, so I know that's a great power plant. And we get a built-in generator to go with it, of course. It's nice to see a boat like this that has already spent its whole life cruising, because it goes to show that this boat is capable of anything that we might want to do with it. The boat's currently in Isla Mujeres, but if it doesn't sell soon, the owner's going to be bringing it back to Florida, which I think might be a negotiating point. If you're willing to go and save them the trouble of bringing it back, maybe they'll consider that a nice feature to the deal. This is just a very beautiful and fast cat that's ready to go on its next big adventure. But one last thing to touch on before we end. With that Leopard 42 we looked at earlier, um, that was one of the last 42s that Leopard made before a redesign, and they came out with the successor, the Leopard 43. And I found one of those for sale too. If that 42 was everything we needed, then this 43 is that just a bit nicer. This is the one I would pick if I were spending 300 grand on a catamaran. I also love the turquoise that they did on all the cushions, and the layout is amazing. I can definitely see myself living on this thing and cruising around the Caribbean with all the comfort and speed that this beautiful boat has to offer. Everything in this is staged really well to sell, and I don't think it'll be on the market very long. Now, I've been accused of not liking catamarans because I rarely talk about them, but honestly, I would take this one in a heartbeat. We just haven't gotten to them in these price point episodes yet because they are fairly expensive compared to their monohull sisters. If you like these videos, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't. It's free for you and it would really mean the world to me. That's it for this week, guys. If you want to chat further, we have a great community going on the Lady K Discord. I'll leave a link in the description. Until next week, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down.